Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Contrarians. This is a, I don't know what we're gonna call this, Contrarians Prevents Martin's Command Performances. Uh, at the last time we had this panel together, I accidentally suggested a topic and we've decided to get the, get the band back together here and run with the idea of are all concept albums prog? Sorry, that was a dramatic pause. I hope that came through. <laughs> so now in order to really get a conversation going, you have to establish some sort of definition for concept album. And while I always tell my students, don't use Wikipedia for a source, I went to Wikipedia because it was quick. And uh, they quote a textbook that says a concept album in popular music is an album that is unified by a theme, which can be instrumental, compositional, narrative, or lyrical. And frankly, that is too big of a definition to work with. So um, I would love, <clears throat> as we go around, I would love to hear each of the panelists provide their definition of a concept album along with whatever notes that you have to present on this topic. <clears throat> so today we're going to start with, uh, let's see here, Todd is unmuted. Todd, why don't you start us off? <laughs> okay. Well, I think of a, pro a concept album of being an album that, well, it's easy to say tells a story, but uh, I think that I think that even a looser concept still counts as a concept album, like something that's presented towards the beginning of the album, then is reprised and and the 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 things in the 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 songs in the middle kind of support what's happening or the the end has a has a conclusion or an explanation for something that was that was presented before again very broad um <laughs> i probably should have looked up what it meant because i think it's uh, i think it could be applied or not applied to a lot of things but um I was just going to go through, I have, I'm probably overprepared. I have a whole bunch of things I want to go through, but I have found some concept albums that are not prog and I'll identify those. And I also want to talk about albums that have a, uh, a concept element to them, like a, like a long song, like 2112 is a perfect example, but it's not the whole album. So sometimes there's a concept album within an album where <laughs> there's also there's it's not long enough for an album so they just tack some more songs on i mean you could start with the obvious lamb lies down on broadway i think this is a uh definitely prog um i also uh was thinking about and we're gonna talk about neil morris in a minute but spock's beard snow also about uh, uh, uh somebody who's kind of of uh misidentified as some kind of prophet or savior uh, and that's that's a very very good one definitely prog then they have another album a later album called octane which is one of those ones where most of it is this song called a flash before my eyes which is about what happens to somebody before what they see before a near-death experience but it's not quite long enough to make the whole album uh definitely prog um i think uh let's see relay or another example of gates of delirium could have been a concept album on its own but they put more stuff on it. Brother, Where You Bound, same thing. Epic title track, uh, definitely prog, but the rest of the album is not. Um, and then we talked about 2112, but when you get to Rush, you've also got Phil with the Kings and Hemispheres, which because of uh, Cygnus X1, I think kind of is like, it's like the prog album is spread out on, on, among two albums. <laughs> and then Clockwork Angels, uh, definitely a concept album. Um, and, and I think prog, but here's an interesting one. Todd Rundgren Liars is a whole album about dishonesty, dishonesty in politicians, dishonesty in uh, uh, religious leaders and stuff like that. Definitely a concept album, not prog. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Porcupine Tree, the, the, I, was, I was actually going to skip by these. The Incident and, uh, and uh, Fear of Blank Planet, I think, count. And I think they're prog. Here's one I don't think is Electric Light Orchestra El Dorado. Um, it's about a Walter Mitty esque kind of character who finds it is that his uh, imaginary life is more interesting than his real life. But I think it's art rock. I don't think this is a prog album. I think if somebody said it was a prog album, I wouldn't say they were wrong. But uh, to me, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Dream Theater, definitely. <laughs> Uh, it seems and, and, and that and that one, Todd, seems yes. from a memory. It's like it's an in inception of concepts because 
I mean, the whole story starts initially with Metropolis Part One and images and words. Right. But the concept, the, the actual story, the plot, uh, since from my memory, is taken from a movie, from a mm-hmm. film, a Kenneth Branagh film called Dead Again, which is basically about this. It's about someone who has these sounds of um, with a um, hypnotist, and it's a big love story and stuff. It, 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 that's it. Like you, you, you see the film Dead Again, and then you're like, wait, I've read this somewhere. It's, it's <laughs> right. story since from memory. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to try not to talk too long about Neil Morris, but he has a bunch of them. He has a uh, one and question mark. One is about going alone in your life without a spiritual leader or community. And question mark is about being uh, feeling not worthy of God's love or really anyone's love. And then, of course, there are these two albums that are about uh, the Pilgrim's Progress, uh, the Great Adventure and Similitude of a Dream. Yeah. Uh, fantastic albums and then he's got jesus christ the exorcist which is kind of a retelling of jesus christ superstar but in 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 his version in neil's version jesus is like this badass who destroys uh demons and so again prog elements but i think it's more of a rock opera uh he's got more i don't want to talk too much about him because i'll go on forever but his last two albums uh, Joseph Part One and Joseph Part Two, The Dreamer and the Restoration, is basically a Prague retelling of uh, the Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat kind of story, and it's definitely Prague. The Whirlwind, definitely Prague, but I, and definitely a concept album. But other transatlantic albums are not concept albums. Um, Merlion Brave, uh, I think, definitely a concept album, uh, and. Uh, definitely Prague, but here's a here's one that's not <laughs> the elder <laughs> so i think this is definitely a concept album a weak concept but a concept album just the same and uh, uh it has art rock elements like in odyssey and just a boy and and but it, i don't i don't think it's a prog album um i have to talk about my favorite band and my favorite album the road of bones which i interpreted as a uh, album about a person who loses their significant other and gets a little unhinged trying to return them. And uh, I've been told that this is actually about a a serial killer. So (laughs) I was totally wrong about my favorite album. I still have my doubts about whether it's actually about a serial killer. And I have to talk about Haken because everybody expects me to. (laughs) (laughs) Their first two albums, uh, definitely Prague can be a sub John right into prog metal, uh, Aquarius and Visions. And, and they're then, very cinematic uh, as well, aren't they? Uh, um, Visions especially is so cinematic. Like like when yes. you read or when, when you when you understand what it's about and you listen to this very like um, uh, almost like a soundtrack kind of music, yes. you feel like you're watching one of these like um, these movies that are like some cross between a horror film, a, th- a Hitchcockian thriller and something with, I don't know, sci-fi. And it's very dark and very, you, you, you can picture seeing it in a cinema, you know, because it's very um, all encompassing and, and uh, yeah, powerful in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, when you think about the concept of visions, it's basically this guy who is concerned because he has this memory of when he was a child, he thinks he killed someone when he was younger. And it turns out that he killed the boy within. And it's like, man, it doesn't get more prog than that. <laughs> but, but the thing about being prog and concept is also that it's a little bit intellectual. There, there, yes. There's a bit of a intellectualism that can almost cross over to um, artsy fartsiness, whatever. Yes. And there's a narrator with kind of a deep voice like this. Yeah. I, I love that. Um, and then Vector is a dark story about this poor man who's being tortured with electrotherapy to try to figure out what's wrong with them. And it does not have a happy ending, spoiler alert. And then basically there's a plea at the end to appreciate the beauty, the beauty and the flaw and the grace of imperfection. Uh, That's have vectors. One of my favorite uh, Prague uh, concept albums. Um, And then I was going to say about it. I was going to definitely mention somebody else might mention this one, but I think Ziggy Stardust, not Prague um, in my opinion, and uh, this is a weird one, but this kind of came up when I was looking through my stuff. In my regards to Broad Street, uh, not even art rock. I think it's just a pop rock uh, <laughs> concept album. So definitely not prog. It's got Beatles covers on it. Uh, I think better than a lot of people give it credit for. But uh, yeah, that's 
that's kind of my thing. And and it was weird. I was really afraid that I was I was not going to be able to find uh, albums, concept albums that were not prog. And I found a bunch. And I actually think I don't have props for these, but I actually think this may be this is my contrarian hot take. I don't think the Wall and Tommy are uh, are prog. I think they're rock operas. Yeah. I think if you said the wall, if somebody said the wall was a prog album, I don't think I would disagree with them again. But uh, I think uh, I don't. I don't think that in my interpretation, I don't think they are. Nice. Cool. Okay. Well, that is uh, that's getting the avalanche going there, Todd. You had a few props. It was good. <laughs> nice. We'll, we'll probably Good getting back God. to some of those points as we go around. Uh, I'm just going to go around my screen. Christian, you are up next, sir. Okay, um, so I guess I'll start with my own definition. Um, to me, a concept album is, um, it's really just a regular album, but you have a prevailing theme throughout the album, and each song will build upon that theme in some way. Um, usually, and more so in a storytelling sense, um, with, you know, like a plot and climax, those kind of things. Um, but I want to keep it as broad as possible because... Um, I mean, that's just kind of how music is, you know, it's, it's, it's a creative thing, you know. Um, but then to the question, to me, um, like, I agree with Todd, um, the answer is a resounding no. Um, there's a lot more nuance to explore there, obviously. Um, but uh, I guess my first point, you know, progressive music, um, that label is not so cut and dry. Um, so like, when is it justifiable to call an album progressive? Um, if you look at the word like heavy and heavy metal, um, that's all relative, right? So Morbid Saint would be heavier than Possessed, um, who's heavier than Slayer and Venom, um, who's also heavier than Motorhead. Um, but within the metal genre, you kind of get that convenience of placing these bands into different subgenres, and you don't really have that with Prog. Um, Prog to me is more of a badge that you give to bands who more so already have an underlying musical direction, right? So you have like prog rock and prog metal, um, prog pop, prog folk. Um, metal kind of, you know, got its own independence, um, unlike prog, despite both of those being genres being rooted, you know, in rock music. Granted, a lot of bands embrace that prog title. Um, and then some bands um, just kind of play around with it and then some bands stumble their way into it um, and that's kind of my main point is here uh, here is that um, I think the easiest way to find yourself in that progressive realm is by writing a concept album um, like obviously concept albums are staples within the progressive music uh, community um, but bands outside of that realm if they do find themselves putting out a concept album it's usually just like once in a career right um, and to assume that a concept album has to be prog is a little silly to me, um, but it's not totally without merit. Obviously, that's why we're having this discussion. Um, but if you if you look at Judas Priest's Nostradamus, Iron Maiden's Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, um, uh, Todd mentioned it, but Kiss's Music from the Elder, and then Wasp's uh, Crimson, The Crimson Idol. All of those albums are, um, I would call progressive standouts in their respective discographies not standouts in the sense that, you know, they're one of their better albums necessarily. Um, but to me, they're clearly more, if you if you view it as a spectrum, they're more progressive um, than what you would expect from those albums, uh, or those bands, rather. Um, and it's kind of funny how those albums are rated, like um, Iron Maidens and Wasps, those albums are, you know, usually ranked really highly, um, whereas Kiss and Judas Priest is a whole different it's completely the opposite, basically. Um, at least that's a mainstream consensus. Um, but to write a concept album, you know, you have to tell a story. You need lyrical themes. You need highs and lows and atmosphere and emotion. Um, so you kind of have to use more tools um, and be a bit more purposeful. Um, and all this comes with varying degrees. Um, but it can all be done with conservative songwriting. Um, and I'll talk about one familiar album in particular, and then I'll mention a few of my other lesser known favorites um, but i want to talk about dio's magica and i almost forgot this album existed um until i was preparing for this um you know i usually prefer my dio with 
uh, Tony Iommi or Richie Blackmore. And even when I do listen to the Dio band, it's it's usually never anything after Strange Highways. And I won't go into the story or anything, but of course, um, there's supposed to be a part two, and unfortunately there wasn't. Um, but to me, this album is uh, kind of a return to form for Dio. Um, it was released in 2000, so like after the 90s, and which is obviously a terrible decade for the classic metal scene. Um, but the album takes a very traditional songwriting approach. Um, you have, you know, aside from, you know, you have their robot voice coming in and out, and you have some lighter orchestral elements, so like some choir arrangements, um, and some flutes and strings. But it's just a traditional metal album. You have your slow, um, <clears throat> excuse me, slower, doomy riffs, um, very bluesy guitar solos. Um, it's really not unlike anything else you would see on you know any of his previous albums um, and then probably the biggest challenge of writing a concept album is telling the story and writing the lyrics um, and of course Dio being Dio already such an imaginative lyricist so it really hardly separates this album from anything else that he would release you know um, so I think this is one of the better examples of you know how, how a concept album doesn't really lock you into that progressive realm um, and then I want to highlight a couple of other examples. Um, Armory, the band, um, it's a speed metal band from Sweden. Um, and you don't get a lot of bands who just strictly specialize in speed metal. Um, it's kind of a middle ground between heavy and thrash, but it's definitely one of my favorite flavors of metal. Um, but if you know anything about Swedish metal, it's very melodic. Um, and these guys are no exception. Um, there's some rougher vocals. Um, they're a space themed band, a la uh, Vector. Um, but not really progressive in the way that Vector are. Um, sonically kind of similar, but they're just very straightforward speed metal. Um, and their last album, Mercurion, released in 2022, uh, is a concept album. Um, definitely not progressive. Um, I wouldn't call it that, um, but easily one of my favorite albums of the last few years, so I definitely recommend that. Um, and then lastly, uh, there's a Polish heavy metal band called Aquila. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but uh, they also released their full-length debut in 22 as well, um, called Mankind's Odyssey. Um, kind of bold for a, a concept album as a debut album, but they do it really confidently. Um, it's also sci-fi themed, very melodic, very traditional, not really a lick of prog to be found on it. So I definitely recommend that as well. Um, but yeah, to me, it's, it's pretty clearly, you know, it doesn't really force you into that progressive realm, but it's really easy to find yourself in there when you have to write a progressive out uh, excuse me a concept album nice very good christian thank you very much what was the name of that last band so yeah the polish band is called aquila a q u i l l a i think it's named after a constellation hmm. okay hmm. very good all right thank you very much couple of different takes there. Let's go across the ocean to uh, Mr. Phil Edward Phyllis. Yes, that's me. Just My friend just called me Phil. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, first of all, I want to say because this is something I keep thinking about that um, I've never been a Kiss fan, um, but ever since I started watching The Contrarians, it's like it's like there's a, there's this drinking game. Like every time someone mentions the elder, take a shot. You know, <laughs> yeah. I've learned so much about Kiss and especially about the elder, all the all the good and, and negative aspects uh, of, of that album. But apparently, um, what's interesting is that uh, this band put a good deal of effort into um, creating a piece. You know, a conceptual piece that is um, musically and lyrically. Um, a few levels up you know it's a bit more complex um and, and the music and the lyrics kind of really work in tandem work together to 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 do something that's a little bit more elevated which i think is one way also of, of looking at this and any concept album will be quite more elevated than um let's say an ordinary album although that does sound a little bit elitist but let's let's go with that because they are trying to 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 um to narrate a certain theme and to evoke certain emotions and ideas uh, or, or just simply to tell a, a meandering story uh, with the music as well you know and the music represents certain moods and 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 um, 
uh, changes and shifts that happen in the story and within uh, the theme. Apropos that, I will basically you, uh, Christian and Todd, you both kind of uh, covered the definitions for me as well. I wouldn't exactly call a uh, rock opera Prague, but that being said, um, when I look, for example, at one of my favorite uh, Prague rock operas, which is this one here, Into the Electric Castle uh, by Arion, uh, Arion Lukasen, and um, who, who always, always, more or less always does these big operas. He has many characters in his stories, which are very nerdy kind of stories. He has a large cast of singers, musicians, guests, everything. Uh, so it is very operatic in a very traditional sense. But then when you listen, especially let's say to this album, it functions almost as an encyclopedia of prog rock. He has no problem of of demonstrating his favorite, who his favorite artists are, his influences, that he is profoundly influenced um, by David Bowie, but also by uh, King Crimson or Pink Floyd, certainly Pink Floyd. Um, and 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 there is a lot of there are many prog elements in this uh, particular opera, um, long form uh, compositions, lots of solos, many uh, shifting um, uh, uh, patterns within the song, many odd time signatures, all the hallmarks of what we typically refer to as prog. I think that that, that mo many, most of these rock operas, either it's Tommy or this one or or maybe the Neil Morse stuff. Uh, are very progressive and and they they demand a certain level of attention you know that that they, they, they sort of invite you to understand the lyrics and and to really dive into a certain universe that they've created where music and lyrics and and certain ideas all work together and and you can really appreciate the effort that goes into that um, all that being said, I personally uh, really appreciate and 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 I would uh, baptize as prog really albums where, um, first of all, the music needs to be certainly complex. Uh, you know, Beyonce has a concept album. I don't think that's prog. Uh, <laughs> I looked that up on Wikipedia, which I also tell my students to avoid. Uh, <laughs> But then, you know, you go to someone like I mentioned them last time as well in our discussion on the diversity of prog metal, Pain of Salvation again. This is the perfect element, the anniversary mix 2020. Um, there is a sort of story here, but it's rather vague, uh, not very clear. There aren't specific uh, characters and a specific, let's say, plot and, and narration. But there there is, um, there is a certain theme that's present. And I really appreciate that when many artists and bands have in mind a certain theme and they try to narrate and to to evoke that theme and to to riff on it and to build on it uh lyrically but also through the music through shifting moods and patterns um you know again with with uh, long durations and uh, many ways of also you know voicing the theme literally you know i mean many singers who really go step forward to to sing in a way that is more evocative and more uh, more demanding both to themselves but also to the listener. And then I think it was really interesting to look at albums that are not typically prog. Uh, Christian mentioned already Nostradamus. I would also mention Lulu, Metallica. You know, it has have Metallica written a prog album? I don't think so. Is Lulu a concert album? Apparently it is. I haven't really spent much time listening to it. Uh, and Seventh Son of the Seventh Son is really fitting very much in in in, in what I, I said before in my uh, definition about theme because i mean i've never really understood a, if there is a story so to speak but there is a certain theme and i really appreciate how musically um it's more adventurous it's very adventurous uh more of those prog elements that steve harris always gravitated towards are present you know already on the first album you have a a song like phantom of the opera uh, which is very progressive in a way, you know that he's been influenced by Chris Squire and by Yes, and that he really appreciates a lot of the uh, prog musicians of the 70s. Uh, but then on Seventh Son of the Seventh Son, he, he, there's definitely more, it's more adventurous, and there's more of an effort, both musically and lyrically, to, to evoke a certain theme, and therefore you don't get much of that humor that you get on previous albums, 
or any of the lighter themes. It's it's definitely more more serious and maybe in a way a little bit more intellectual. Anyway, uh, proceeding. Um, I have here two albums by a band I love very much, Nevermore, U.S. Um, U.S. metal, U.S. power metal legends. I'm not sure how to call them. They are a category of their own. Again, um, musically very adventurous and complex. I don't know if we can call it exactly prog. Uh, I probably wouldn't. But there are themes present in 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 the politics of ecstasy and dreaming neon black. Very deep, heavy themes uh, about corruption and society, misanthropy, but also in the politics of ecstasy, um, moral Dane, uh, rest in peace. Uh, the frontman of the band was very much influenced by the writings of Timothy Leary, and he's kind of I think he, he he's again he's sort of riffing on many of the. Um, teachings and and writings of uh, Timothy Leary, and in Dreaming Neon Black, he is you know apropos something terrible that happened in his own life with a um, a girlfriend who was lost and then apparently was a victim of a uh, sect of a religious sect. Uh, sh- uh, he's he's riffing even more uh, clearly on his uh, misanthropy hatred of organized religion, society, the church, uh, the idea of God. Uh, and there is a theme, again, running through it, and very complex as well. And then I found this one here in my CDs, uh, good old German power metal, Gamma Ray, No World Order. Uh, most, of this, most of the songs here are more or less about conspiracy theories, Illuminati, uh, you know, I don't know, a, a dark underworld society who are controlling us, whatever. I don't believe in conspiracy theories. Um, but anyway, there's a theme that's present here, but it's not very adventurous or complex or or um, demanding lyrically or even musically. It's just good old meat and potatoes, uh, power metal. Uh, another one that's uh, uh, a bit of an outlier, maybe I was looking at this here, S- System of a Down, uh, Hypnotize. Uh, anti-war album from beginning to end. It's all more or less about societal degradation in relation to war bombs falling the war on terror etc and um it's very i mean they're there they have always been a very adventurous band they've had influences ranging from traditional armenian music to uh frank zappa even uh but it's not prog but again conceptual very rich demanding it it, it, it it's it kind of tells you that it's it's worth the effort to really read the lyrics and 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 to think of um the people who write the lyrics as intellectuals or as generally thinking thinking individuals who are trying to say something also through uh, their music. Uh, King Diamond Conspiracy, definitely not prog. Uh, love King Diamond, love this album. Uh, Andy Larocque is one of the greatest sort of, you know, traditional heavy metal guitarists, um, underrated virtuoso of the guitar. It is demanding, but it's not uh, prog in any way, and 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 the concepts on these albums are very often the equivalent of a uh, B movie horror film from the eighties, a um, uh, grindcore film or something like that. No, no, not grindcore. Sorry, grindhouse. Is that what it's called? Grindhouse. Yeah, I don't know those really cheap sort of horror movie uh, venues. And lastly, something which could be classified as prog. I'm looking here at the very last album by Chuck Schuldiner's Death the seminal band that is considered one of the um, uh, forefathers of death metal. But then from a certain point on, uh, Chuck Schuldiner became a much more uh, developed and adventurous, again, musician. And he got really into philosophy, like existential philosophy and psychology. And he they made this album called Individual Thought Patterns, which is one of the hallmarks of um, heck death, you would say. This one is also very much in that realm of tech death, but I also find that it is, it has many textures, many of, of you know, many emotional textures, if that's the right way of calling it. Uh, it's one of their most complex albums. And, lyr- and lyrically, this is, uh, again, he's riffing on Nietzsche and Nietzschean philosophy. And I like it that it's it, it feels like a theme, but he's not exactly telling a story or or trying to create a set of characters or anything like that. It's really a theme. And I think that is the most, one of the most interesting forms of concept albums uh, because it's not just a story. It's really trying to evoke something 
in a way that is obscure almost and and vague um and and maybe that's you know characteristic of poetry i think these albums are much more poetic in in how they go about it and and they really call they really ask from the from the listener to to make take that extra step to listen and to read the lyrics at the same time and to really get immersed in this entire uh, artistic universe you know it's it's it's, it's great uh, but as I said, yeah, you have concert albums by Metallica or Beyonce or or even Judas Priest. It's it's not the same thing. Nice. Cool. Okay, good stuff. And uh, made a couple of those because I forgot to mention after Christian did his segment. Am I the only Dio fan that loves Imagine, uh, excuse me, Magica? If, <laughs> yes. if people want us to do a Dark Horse album on, on Magica, put it in the comments. Yeah, and, uh, and maybe we'll do that one of these days. Yeah, um, and Dreaming Neon Black from Nevermore, fantastic album, definitely a concept album. I would, yeah. I would support that. Yeah. All right. Um, let me just check real quick before we move on to Martin Pontus. Are you actually with us? Yes, I'm with you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can. Are you giving yeah. us okay. camera or no? Yeah, I, I would love to, but I don't know how to do it because it seems <laughs> to be not working today. Okay. Um, it's uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's my eyesight again. Ah, uh, here it goes. There uh, we go. Uh, oh, there you are. Nice, <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Well, Pontus, we're. I'm going to leave you for last, if you don't mind. So I'm going to yes. move on to Martin and have him do his piece, and then I've got some uh, mostly historical things to throw in. Okay. Lots mm -hmm. of good stuff we've gone over so far, though. Martin, what have you got yeah. for us? So, yeah. So we were going to call this is every concept album prog question mark, exclamation mark sort of thing. Right. So, uh, you know, I'll give you a little Canadian perspective to begin with. So, um, you know, uh, being a freelancer, I often get paid in U.S. dollars. So, uh, you know, and we make trips to the States all the time. So when you've got the Canadian dollar, it, it's 0.75 of a one. Right. So it's uh, it's three quarters exactly of a, of a U.S. dollar. But when you flip it around, you get you know, you get 1.33 as the conversion rate. So you can go up or you can go down sort of thing. So it's, so the idea is here, a subset sort of thing. Every, every prog album isn't a concept album, of course, but Todd brought up a, a cool point. Um, you know, number one, we know that probably prog has more concept albums than anybody, but as Todd has pointed out, uh, even when they're not giving you full concept albums, they can give you a side, they can give you 11 or 12 or 13 minutes. And then it even feels like a lot of their other lo long songs are conceptual as well. So um, I wanted to point out a couple of things. So number one, um, yeah, we, we know that there are a lot of non-prog bands that make concept albums. Alice Cooper, Beach Boys, Coheed and Cambria, we can call them prog. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, we can call them somewhat prog. You know, they're all over the place kind of thing. But go back to the early days. You got Frank Zappa and Freak Out. You got pr uh, Pretty Boys. Uh, I mean, Pretty Things, uh, SF Sorrow, which yeah. is considered, uh, you know, the first prog album along with Frank Zappa, along with Sgt. Pepper. Um, we got Devin Townsend doing Punky Brewster. We got Green Day. We've got, I did these two books, right? We've got Pink Floyd. Dark Side of the Moon, which uh, fits a, a, a couple of things here. Number one, we can debate whether Pink Floyd is prog. And I love Philip's treatise on uh, uh, the idea of theme, right? So this is an album that's loosely uh, loosely conceptual, but it's more about time, right? Anytime somebody tells you their album is about time or betrayal or nostalgia, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a little less... Um, it's it's a it can be a little looser, but I love that idea that that Phil mentioned about um, it being a little more like poetry. It's also a little bit more like abstract visual art versus realism, right? Which is kind of cool. So it is asking more of the listener. Um, then another one I did this book last year as well, Quadrophenia. So here we've got go into the uh, rock opera idea, right? So um, we've got that that nice uh, that nice split between rock opera and concept album and by the way before i forget todd brought up an interesting term that we could possibly do a whole show on this idea of art rock right um which is uh which is an interesting one so um yeah and then again uh i i had taken this out um because again here we have a loose theme 
Bruce was never a big fan of this. You know, famously, he talks about, I remember him telling me this, uh, that when they heard Queensryche, Operation Mind Crime, he put his head in his hands and said, that's what we should have done. Something uh, much stronger uh, in terms of being prog. But uh, but yeah, what I, what I wanted to say is that, um, you know, the, the main... Probably the the first thing we all think about and the most substantial thing we think about when we think of what what is Prague is we think of the concept album. Then we think of complex music, time signatures, classical music, long songs, short songs, instrumental passages, uh, not having verse chorus, verse chorus uh, rules, all that sort of stuff, fantasy cover art. But uh, I, I think I think the one thing that has the most color to it is the I- idea of being of being a, a of concept album. So I would say that the answer to the question is every concept album prog. I would say it's yes in a way um, because I think every time you do a concept album, no matter what kind of genre you're playing in, you're you're taking on a little bit of that nuance of prog. You're taking on the biggest, most celebrated prog characteristic, and you're also being progressive in the in the definition of the term in that you're adding an extra layer on just to collect a collection of nine or ten songs right um you are you are bringing this narrative to it so you know if uh i think in most cases one would argue that um that it's a bonus it's an extra you're adding something on if if you are being progressive rather than just a, a completely chaotic collection of songs that isn't even particularly themed that you are being more progressive than you were before. So I would think um, in that respect, um, you, you are now being progressive and you are, you are prog. So is every, uh, is every concept album prog? I would say uh, yes. And uh, that's all I have to say. Wow. Very nice. Okay. Uh, I'm going to eventually get around to a bit of a hot take on uh, Iron Maiden versus Queen Drake. So if, if I don't, I'm, I'm making notes because my mind is Swiss cheese these days. So if I don't remember, just remind me, hot take, Iron Maiden versus Queen's Rock. So uh, I want to talk about the idea of the uh, of the album. And actually, so for our theme, my answer is, are all, are all um, concept albums prog? Well, it depends on when you ask, doesn't it? Because I think the answer is no, yes, no, maybe, and then no in that order as we go through time so um this is this is not a pointless digression i know these these always feel like pointless digressions the long play album becomes the standard musical format in 1948 prior to that the standard format the 78 rpm had one song on it so think of it as a 45 or what do they call them in the uk a seven inch something like that Mm -hmm. And anyway, just a single, um, even though it was a, a big disc, it was just one song. And when you get to the uh, the 33 RPM uh, long play record in 1948, suddenly you have multiple songs on a single disc. So that was a brand new thing. But swing music is still the dominant popular music format. Hey, just to top. correct you, and 78s had no songs on them when you broke them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yes. yes, that is uh, that is very true. So uh, the popular music that was not swing music, we did still have. We had country western. We had what we would now call folk music, and that type of music was very involved in storytelling. So this idea of of your songs telling stories that's as old as music. Those are the the oldest songs we know of are, are songs that tell stories about things, right? So that's a very old concept. But now we've got long play albums, which have multiple songs. But once we get into the rock and roll era, the single takes over again as the dominant format for rock buyers. You have, you know, think of Bill Haley and the Comets putting out rock around the clock. They're selling singles. The Beatles are selling singles. People were not buying albums until the mid 1960s. Um, And it it gets a little confused um, on exactly when the the LP takes over from singles in terms of the dominant format for selling rock music, but it's sometime in the mid sixties um, and probably with the Beatles. And they of course put out a very early um, 
uh, concept album in the form of Sgt. Pepper's. Now, some people say that, that Rubber Soul and Revolver were concept albums, but that gets back to that very nebulous idea of it just has to be linked together. I mean, how nebulous can your concept be and still have it? Because every band wants to put out their concept is we're going to put out a good album, right? So you have to have something to tie your concept together. Sgt. Pepper's had the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. Um, and this is interesting because it's about this time that we see prog rock, the, the nascent beginnings of prog rock become a thing in about 1969, the same time that heavy metal becomes a thing. Those, that has always fascinated me that prog and metal start at functionally the same time. So um, some of your earliest albums, you have King Crimson coming out in 1969 uh, with Court of the Crimson King. You've got... Uh, I had to look this up because I'm not a, I'm not a big Genesis fan, but Phil Collins' pre-Genesis band Flaming Youth put out one album in 1969 called Arc 2, and it's a concept album. So here you've got a format now which will support longer music because you could do an, an album that was one entire side for a song, um, as we would see with some prog rock bands like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Um would put out these huge, lengthy, epic songs at a time when people started buying long play records. And this is when you get uh, Tommy and, and you get, um, uh, Elton John did a concept album apparently, which was about the American, uh, American West. So all of these things come together in the late sixties. So to begin with the entire history of music to me is conceptual. Um, until you hit the rock era where it becomes song based again. And, and I'm sticking in rock and metal because once we get outside of that, things just, you lose focus too much. So in the mid 60s, we get back to, we get to albums, we get to concept albums, and concept albums predate then prog. But if we go to our last show where I kind of ended that with the idea that prog just is anything pushing the medium forward. So here we literally have guys, they're writing a new style of music, they're using new technologies. The other bands are hearing those, you know, the um, the Beach Boys heard Sgt. Peppers and went, well, we've got to top that. And, you know, Pete Townsend heard Sgt. Peppers and went, well, I can't put out a mono album anymore. Now I'm going to put out this quadraphonic album that nobody could listen to because no one had quadraphonic stereos. Those were or I shouldn't say stereo is, is double image uh, or a uh, two image, uh, quadraphonic being four. So the artists are pushing the boundaries. They're pushing the technology, they're pushing the music. And in the process, they create these rock operas, they create these conceptual albums, and then Prague takes off. And at that point, anybody who doesn't want to be part of that Prague world obviously steps back. So your Led Zeppelins, your Deep Purples, your Black Sabbaths, your Uriah Heaps. Uriah Heap had some conceptual pieces, but you wouldn't call them prog albums or, or concept albums. I don't know, Salisbury, Salisbury a concept album? No? Uh, okay. No, but it is It is what the Todd said earlier about uh, Farewell to Kings. There is suddenly like one song and I think it's a piece the title track. Right. That, which is it's like 15 minutes. Or you get a song like The Park which is so so prog so king crimson this jazzy prog it's 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 like it's like oh here we go they're doing a prog song they can really they, they can really play their hats off these guys and not just you know rockers anyway right so the uh, interestingly i said i think the metal guys diverge from prog very quickly because they don't want to be part of that which is interesting because prog was so much more commercially appealing at that time, although metal would later bury prog uh, in sales and those would rejoin in the 80s. So, but then that dies out about 73, 74. And then you have non prog artists like David Bowie putting out Ziggy Stardust and the Spider, or the Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust uh, and the Spiders from Mars, uh, or Diamond Dogs. Diamond Dogs, clearly a, a concept album. It was supposed to be based on 1984, but he couldn't get permission from the people who owned the rights to 1984 to put out an album based on it. So he just wrote this weird story about, um, now I can't remember the name of the city and Diamond Dogs, ah, my brain. Anyway, so now you've got pop artists doing cons or, um, concept albums. 
So now we've gotten away from it being totally, if you're going to do this, it's prog because it gives you these long song structures. It gives you these, you know, everything that prog guys love, you can stick into these concept albums, but then rock guys just take over. Um, but that only lasts for a couple of years. And then that, that idea really dies in the late seventies with the weird exception of kiss. And we're going to keep coming back to the elder because what a weird, <laughs> that may not have been prog, but it was kiss's best attempt at prog. And that's where you get to this idea Christian brought up of it's a spectrum, right? Yeah, it's not a prog album, but it's the progiest thing Kiss ever did. Um, and that's you get that a lot with these concept albums. And then we kind of move all the way through the 80s because the 80s are very much a pop uh, decade until 84, 85. And there's this weird uptick in concept albums in heavy metal now. Because prog still isn't making much of a comeback. You know, I mean, your prog bands are bands like Asia that are putting out pop singles. So heavy metal takes on the concept album flag in 1987, uh, with King Diamond being kind of arguably in the front wave. Some people uh, say Halloween, but Keeper of the Seven Keys Part One is not in any way a concept album that I know of. And it's definitely not prog. It has one long song, though. So there's your. There's your one long song idea. And the title I, I track, the title track yeah, well, is like a battle of good versus evil gods. Well, that's and that's whatever. on part two though, yes. which comes out in in uh, in eighty eight. So in eighty seven, you've got part one and you've got King Diamond coming out with Abigail. So at this point, King Diamond specializes in concept albums. That's kind of his thing. Like you say, he does these these horror movie based concept albums. And Iron Maiden come out with Seventh Son, their prog album. And that was the one that really got the conversation going among us metalheads is, oh, is this prog? Because I didn't know anybody who was listening to Yes and Genesis and prog music from the from the 70s in the late 80s. If, if you started listening to music in the 80s, we did not go back to 1970s prog at that point. Um, we wanted modern music. So having these new exciting bands come out and then um, Queen's Riot comes out with Mind Crime. And I've always been annoyed at Bruce Dickinson's reaction to Mind Crime because to me, Mind Crime is progressive only, or more progressive only in terms of its story. The structure of Seventh Son is much more progressive than Operation Mind Crime ever will be. So I think what he's really mad at is uh, Mind Crime outsold him, which is. Um, that, that's a different, argue, a different argument entirely. But so at this point, heavy metal takes over the concept album and that stays until heavy metal splits off prog metal and kind of brings modern progressive music along with it for the ride. And now that has become so much a part of the, the musical culture that it's no longer necessary for something to be either heavy metal or prog and put out concept albums. Like say, everyone's putting out concept albums. Sting's Dream of the Blue Turtles is a concept album because it's an album based on concepts about things he dreamed. Apparently he uh, uh, kept a dream notebook and I'm not a Sting expert. That just has always stuck in my mind. My wife's a big Sting fan. Um, so yes, it, it was not, to me, concept albums were not prog, but then they were, but then they weren't. But then arguably they were in the late eighties, right? Are they prog? I still don't. I don't know if Seventh Son is prog or not. It is the prog, like Christian said, it's the progiest thing Maiden ever did. Well, until you cross into the 21st century and now arguably every album they do is progier than Seventh Son. <laughs> but that is a topic for a different show. So I'm going to leave it there. That's kind of my uh, my historical overview of it. And uh, we'll move it down to Pontus. Pontus, what have you got? Is every concept album prog no. question mark <laughs> and, and, and give your definition. I mean, I mean, oh and give your definition of, of a concept album yes thank you oh um a concept album for me is you know uh, as you said storytelling uh and i think it goes as you said it goes way back to the first uh decade of the album as such before you had the long player you had um different 78 and different 
um, <clears throat> folders, and that, beca- that became called an album. You had different sort of uh, different records in a in a folder, and the folder was called the album. But um, <clears throat> the the first thing I can think of as a concept album is Frank Sinatra. I mean, Frank Sinatra had different themes for his albums. He could, you know, there is um, um, songs for swinging lovers. There is um, um, that 1967, 1967, 68, 65 album, uh, the um, uh, September of My Years, I think deals with aging. And Johnny Cash had a lot of uh, concept albums telling stories. I mean, country music is storytelling music anyway. So he did that with a lot of uh, his 1950s and 60s albums. Um, And I wouldn't consider (laughs) Johnny Cash prog. Um, So we have to, you know, we have to to sort of um, consider the fact that, you know, the prog genre is also genre now that is defined I don't know any, but I don't think many people in the early seventies call it prog. I think they call it heavy music. At least is what what um, Sid Smith says when he wrote the book of King Crimson. Uh, so I think I think the notion of being prog is something that just came along with the eighties. Um, that definition uh, really settled because we had art rock and we had. Um, classic rock classic pop where moody blues was a, a band that dealt with classical music but i think a concept album for me is for instance uh days of future past which deals with a day it goes um from morning to evening and the songs are loosely based on the theme on living a day um I think Animals by Pink Floyd is a great concept album dealing with psychological, um, how people react in a certain decision. People becomes um, uh, either dogs or pigs or sheep uh, in Roger Waters' um, estimation about 1984. Um, I think um, when Maiden did um, seven Son of Seven Son. I think they made it because they wanted. They they had touched on subjects before. They had, you know, the whole Power Slave album dealt with the sort of, you know, the Eastern mythologies and Power Slaves, and you had uh, the whole concept of staging, like it was an Egyptian. Um, you know, he he was a mummy, wasn't he? You know, Eddie. And you had the next time you were out in a sort of landscape that caught somewhere in time where you were, um, where the band was dealing with um, the concept of being uh, in a sci-fi world, rather. And, you know, then they decided, all right, let's make a, let's make a concept album. Make, let's make a story around this. But is it prog? <laughs> I think many people consider, I consider I remain in a prog band. I mean, they, they, they totally were inspired by Genesis and, and, um, Russian things like that. When, when they started, I mean, you hear Wishbone Ash in there, you hear, um, a lot of, like, lots of those influences coming to them, but they made it in a different way. They had punk as well, influencing them. So they, 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 they went that way, but then they, you know, it was looser. You could you could go there. How do you how do you find Marillion, um, near Prague, of course, uh, nowadays considered, but also telling a story. Those four albums. Um, how about um, you say David Bowie? Uh, how about the 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 sort of story that runs through? 
the early pop albums, when he tells, you know, or the Berlin album by Lou Reed. Is that a prog album? I don't think it is. I, I do think it's a, I, I do think it's a concept album, but I do, I don't think, I don't hear any prog. I do hear, um, I do hear, I do hear punk rock, um, but I do do, um, and I do hear sort of the the, the concept of something that is far more heavier and far more uh, bleak than anything that Jess would have done. So, so I think I think the concept, the storytelling in music, stands on its own two legs. But prog has become the poster child for this, um, telling stories. And I think Reed is absolutely right. When, when um, in 1967, when when um, Sgt. Pepper was released. Um, it was said to be a concept album, but Lennon said, I was never part of that concept. My songs were never part of the Sgt. Pepper concept. He said later. So was it a concept album or was it just a, a bunch of songs taking taking a theme rather than anything else? You had, um, I think that was the case. And then they made a film. I think a lot of these concept thinking is frustrated filmmakers, right? Or, or or, or or book writers, right? They want to do something, tell a story, but instead of doing a book, they, they want to use music. And sometimes it works, like with um, Queen Strike, and sometimes it doesn't, like with The Elder. No one understood it, you know, <laughs> sadly. Nowadays, we, 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 we reconsider it and we think it's better, but, you know, that back then, it was, a, you know, it, it collapsed. The band collapsed almost. Um, so, so um, it can you, you you have to be really sort of um, if you're going to tell a story, you're going to tell it well. And there's other other story, you know, concept albums that have been considered concept albums, like "Thick as a Brick." Was that a concept album? According to Ian Anderson, it was a send up of a concept album. Aqualung was considered a, a concept album with two sides, one dealing with God, one dealing with homeless people. But he didn't feel it was a concept album. But nowadays he changed his mind. Oh, maybe. One of the best concept albums, I think, is, is Quadrophenia, because it's so filmic. You can actually follow in sound. It's drenched in sound effects, and it's drenched in, 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 in you can easily follow the story. You, and you know, just, if, if, if I may interrupt there, you mentioned Jeff yeah. Rotal and Ian Anderson. I mean, yeah. Ian Anderson thought he wasn't doing a, a concept album, but this guy will never, would never, and still doesn't sit down to write lyrics thinking just, oh, I'll write a song that's just this or that with a few rhymes in it. He has a whole, you know, universe, a whole, a whole, he has yeah. conceptualized something in his mind and he, 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 yeah. he plays on that either with the, uh, you know, heavy horses, or or, or with uh, um, Aqualung, he has ideas and and characters in his mind. He doesn't just everything he does is concept. Yeah, but so has Lou Reed. Uh -huh. So had Lou Reed. You know, look at look at the first Velvet Underground album, presenting those uh, characters to us. You know, the guy dealing with heroin, the guy um, going waiting for it for the guy to come out and sell him his shit. The guy, um, uh, the girl who who is a femme fatale. You know, the, the, it's very strong sort of pictures of people. We're in a universe. We're in the, in a story. We're in this world, which these people are giving us. We're in this world for five, for for forty five minutes, or is it just uh, thirty seven minutes? Um, and I mean, some people, some people um, were su successful in that telling, uh, bringing that story to an end. Some people did it with, like, for instance, Rush. If if you go, um, they spread the story through other, you know, throughout albums. The, you know, the the two Cygnus um, pieces. I never, I never followed that story. So I know, I don't know <laughs> really how that how that develops because i never understood it but uh that was a, a story told through many many albums 
And that was picked up by Dream Theater, of course, telling the AA story. AA saga, as it's called. Um, but you don't have to, if Johnny Cash can tell the story, so can um, Neil Moores or Andrew Lloyd Webber or Tim Rice. You know, the storytelling is uh, is an easy way to do it. I mean, Sammy Hager just did, he had an album by The Circle, which he said was a concept album recently. And he says, "I oh, why haven't I done this before? It's more much easier to write when I have a story to tell. Um, and it comes in the concept to follow. Um, you had other people like like uh, Stevie Wonder had an album in '79, um, "Journey Through the Secret Life of Plants." That was a concept album. Look at Tom Waits. Yeah, absolutely storytelling. So no, it's not a prog album, but it's a way in to prog. <laughs> if you're familiar with storytelling and storytelling albums, you might easier go with Quadrophenia then you understand the idea what it is but i don't i don't consider every um every uh, sort of concept album a prog album um but i i i i i, I digress about that title of the music also i i i am very very questionable about what is prog and what is not and it's just a title about it's just titling music i mean you have genres because people are going to find out about in a record store, or, or you know on a you know on a um, streaming service. You know, for for Maiden, I don't think they, you know, they played metal, but I don't think they they felt like oh we don't we, we don't want to you know just stay there. Look at Sabbath, you know they they ventured in and out of prog, they ventured in out of um, heaviest you know made these heavy albums and then they they met, ventured for a while to AR rock in the, in the late 80s um so i think that we as listeners construct the con the concept of what the music is and what the barriers of music is i don't think we can blame musicians for that um because they 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 are creating stuff and some of them are using storytelling Nice. Very cool. Hey, it's important to have nebulous terms or we wouldn't have things to argue about as music loving nerds. <laughs> and Absolutely. that generates that generates the YouTube views, right? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So uh that is uh that is a lot of uh of food for thought there. As always, I like to give Martin the last word in these videos. Martin, have any follow up thoughts? because uh, we've gone over about an hour of stuff on yes, no, maybe. What do you think? No, wrap it up. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go, folks. This has been The Contrarians. We've been discussing whether all concept albums are prog. Answer that question for yourself. Put it in the comments. Let us know what you think. Uh, the Contrarians, you have a Patreon situation, and uh, it's a great community. Come in, join us, stop by. You can participate in the panels. You can suggest topics. You can just, you know, be a partisan for your favorite band. You can support Magica, which is an underrated Dio album. Dog on it. I can't be the I'm only one. And hey, there we go. I knew there was someone else on this planet. Um, the robot voices bug me. And we yeah. will get back <laughs> together soon. In the meantime, go and listen to your favorite concept album. There are so many of them. Um, and we will see you on the next video. Right. See you later. All right. Bye, Thanks, guys. Bye now.